today. If you support it, you go straight to hell. The Bible said that. We can save you from this perverse generation. Hallelujah. He saved the Apostle Paul says, uh, the Apostle Peter says, from this perverse generation. And turn to Jesus Christ, who loves you, who died for you, who shed his precious blood for you while you were yet sinning. Christ died for the ungodly. Come talk to them. Tell me what you what you have to say. We're, we're, we're willing to have a conversation. You see, that's what we're trying. But, but listen, we're trying. But no, no, no. You, you may not want to listen, but there are people. Listen, there are people that besides this guy who does not want the truth, there may be someone here who actually wants the truth. Amen. Amen. People across Europe and beyond took part in annual pride parades over the weekend in a celebration of LGBTQ rights, achievements and communities. In Rome, campaigners took to the streets and called out what they see as attacks on the community under Prime Minister George Maloney's government. Happy Pride Month! There is no right if you look at the constitution of Kenya and the laws we have in this country to be gay, to be a lesbian, to be transgender, or to be queer. Thousands of Israelis joined Jerusalem's Pride Parade on Thursday, which includes multiple cabinet members who have expressed homophobic views in the past. Ben Bive was among the organizers of a Beast March in 2006. Um, at the same time, the Biden administration committed to calling out any foreign government that advanced anti-gay legislation or violates human rights. All three of the countries that you are visiting on this trip have advanced anti-gay, advanced or proposed uh, anti-gay legislation. And uh, let me be clear about where we stand. First of all, for the American press who are here, you know that a great deal of, of work in my career has been to address human rights issues, equality issues across the board, including as it relates to the LGBT community. And I feel very strongly about the importance of supporting uh, the, the, the freedom and, and supporting and fighting for equality among all people. And Don't be intimidated by any person. <laughs> if God is with you, who can be against you? And if God says, please go into the wilderness, multiply and fill the world, that is undemocratic. What is democracy? That somebody else will have to dictate to me as to what is good and what is bad. Sorry. Until the school system got involved. Up until 2018, you rarely even saw the rainbow flag flying outside Canadian public schools. Now, schools across the country have leaned hard into pride celebrations. Drag queen guest speakers, craft projects on gender diversity, or just get the kindergartners together for a miniature pride parade. This issue of homosexuality is a very serious issue because it is an issue of the human race. If you try to recruit people into a disorientation, then we, we go for you. We punish you. That's number one. But, but secondly, if you violently grab some children and you rape them and so on, we kill you. Mm -hmm. And that one I totally support and I will support. Doing a makeup tutorial if you're a man, standing up for gay rights, or having a quote suggestive conversation with another woman. Now, these are the kind of things that can get you prison time under Saudi Arabia's restrictive cybercrime laws. Wouldn't it be great for the president of Iran to say, you know something? Everyone's entitled to be whatever sexuality they are born to be. That would be a great symbol of freedom. Do you really believe that someone is born homosexual? Yes, I absolutely believe that. Yes, I do. I'm sorry, let me ask you this. Do you believe that anyone is given birth to through homosexuality? Homosexuality ceases procreation. 
On family, there is no backpedaling. And don't call me to say I'll not go to your country. What do, what do we lack in Kenya? Yeah. You can cancel your visa. Yeah. I was a short while back in a foreign country. And you can imagine being approached by a fellow man asking me to go out and, 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 and mess with him, sleep with him. <laughs> and the guy has the audacity to tell me I look nicely round. <laughs> can you imagine? What a level of perversion. So, so I'm telling our people that this is an enterprise which is going on, there is no reverse gear, and it is going to succeed. On the day this bill is going to be tabled, it is going to be Kenya versus Sodom and Gomorrah, the other side. In Kenya, to be gay, the LGBT community is, is illegal. They just want to have equal rights, the same privacy and equality as all other Kenyans do. Country. I want to be very clear. I will not engage in a subject that is of no, it, uh, it, it is not of any major importance to the people and the Republic of Kenya. This is not an issue, as you would want to put it, of um, human rights. This. this is an issue of society, of our own base as a culture, as a people. We have. So I'm asking for your opinion both as a man and as president. Are you in favor of changing the constitution on that issue? No, I am not. It's never a priority in Zimbabwe to deal with that issue. Does Islam treat individuals with non-traditional sexual orientation differently? Actually, it's even tougher. Read our law carefully and pay attention to its name. It's called a ban on the propaganda of pedophilia and homosexuality. Ban on the propaganda of pedophilia and homosexuality. There are countries, including in Europe, where they are debating the possibility of legalizing pedophilia. Publicly discussing this in Parliament, they can do what they want, but the people of Russia have their own cultural code, their own traditions. The most loving thing we can do for you, sir, is to tell you the truth. We want you to be saved. We want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want you to know your creator. Because you were made in his image. But now you're trying to take on another image. And we don't want that for you. And more importantly than us, God doesn't want that for you. The Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all, all will come to repentance. And I know when we mention the name Jesus, people get riled up, they get a little angry, like this guy here. But we're willing to talk to you, sir, if you want to come on over and talk to us. You'll go hoarse without a microphone, you're losing your voice. But you don't have to do that. You can come on over and we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, you know? And that's for anyone here. We have some brothers and sisters here who would love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and share the truth about your soul. The state of your soul, the state that it's in now, it's a scary and dangerous place to be. Because the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. There is a judgment day coming, people. Let, let, let me start off by saying that very clearly. There will, There is a judgment day coming. We can celebrate, we can walk, and we can smile and enjoy this nice clean air. It's going to be sudden. And if you're not ready to meet them, you're going to be cast into outer darkness. The Bible calls it a place called hell. We don't want you to go there, and that's why it's more loving for us to get up here and tell you something that can literally benefit you, not just also in this life, but in the life to come. There is a life to come. And uh, I find that many people are just not concerned about that. And that's why people celebrate what they call pride. You know, that just simply to call it pride, 
I mean, to, to call it pride is, is, is demonic in itself because the Bible says that God hates a proud look. It's an abomination to him. So that's that's what he says about proud. Come talk to me. Tell me what you what you have to say. We're, we're, we're willing to have a conversation. You see, that's what we're trying. So listen, we're trying. But no, no, no. You, you may not want to listen, but there are people. Listen, there are people that besides this guy who does not want the truth, there may be someone here who actually wants the truth. Amen. Somebody may want the truth. The truth is that there's, man, listen, for you, there's freedom. I know you flip me the bird, but I love you anyway, okay? The truth is there's freedom from sin. There's freedom from sin. There's freedom from fornication. There's freedom from homosexuality. There's freedom from, from, from uh, masturbation. There's freedom from lying and cheating and stealing. There's freedom from sin. Don't you want to know about this freedom? Ma'am, what you want to know about this freedom? I really can't hear you. You can come talk to us. We're not going to bite. We just want to share the truth. We want to tell you that you can be saved from sin. That's the true freedom. True freedom is to be saved and set free from the bondage of Satan and from the bondage of sin. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that don't believe. And I understand that. We know that. We believe that over here because we know what we were saved from and we were blinded. And many of you are blinded. That's why you get upset and you flip, you know, your middle finger and things like that. But there's no need to do that. I thought you were, I thought you guys were loving. That you, you won't see any of us here throwing up the middle finger to you, like this lady. But you flip us the middle finger. Why? That's not loving. That's not loving. So, you think this is loud? That's not loving, man. I don't see, I don't see that, that, I don't feel that same love that we're giving to you. We're giving you the truth. We're showing you love. We're speaking with a speaker so that you can hear. Uh, we know that the gospel of Jesus Christ, we know that it, it's foolishness to those that are perishing and some people get upset about it. And we understand that. But we want you to be saved. We want you to come out of your sin. We want you to let it go. Many people ask us why we're here, right? We're here because there's a lot of souls here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And we know, and, and, and if you be honest with us, because we know we, 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 can, we can judge righteous judgment, you're not saved if you don't have Jesus. And if you're supporting this, then you're not saved. You need Jesus. And so that's why we're here because it's, it's so many people, so many people that are lost here that need Jesus. So we come here because we know that most of you are on your way to destruction and we want to tell you that there is a way, a narrow way that leads to life if you're willing to let go of your sin. Some of you went to a church, some of you grew up in church and you're running, you ran from church. Some of you know better, you know better. But you, you've heard another false gospel that says it's okay to live in sin and name the name of Christ. And that's probably where it started. Some of you just reject the truth, simply just reject the truth. But we want to tell you, you're going to have to give an account to God who knows everything about you. All the hairs on your head. He knows everything about you, knows what you've been through. Many of you have been, have experienced some things when you were young. Somebody violated you. And I know, I know, you can't tell me that that's not true. Uh, about 40, almost 50% of those, almost 50% of those who are currently in the LGBTQ lifestyle were violated when they were young. That's a fact. That's of men. That's of men. Of women, that's a fact. Of women, of women, about 22%. That's true. Yes, it is. That's true. Look up, do your research. Do your research. So, so what we're saying is that most of you have been molested, and we understand it, but then, then listen, there's hope in Jesus Christ. There's salvation in Jesus Christ. Many people have chosen this. Listen, you're not born this way. We're all born with the propensity to sin. I was born with the propensity to sin. 
I said I was in fornication. I was in fornication. I wasn't born what? Say that again. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the gospel of Jesus Christ, man. No, that can't be wrong. You, you, uh, you see, you need you need salvation too, my man. You need salvation too. The Bible says to judge righteous judgment means to share the gospel. And I know you want to get the crowd on your side because you're a people pleaser. But listen, we only here to please God. We're not here to please man. We're here to please God and tell the truth. And we have some some wonderful men of God who will share the truth with you. Yes. Uh, born God. So so do you think you know Allah is not God? Allah, you got a different God. You know. But let me tell you, what Allah approve of this lifestyle you're supporting? Would Allah approve of this? No, no, yeah, you. Uh, you know you wouldn't. You know he ain't even wouldn't approve of this. So, listen, guys. This is the only hope that can save your soul is through Jesus. And if anyone has any ounce of conviction, let me please hear me. Any ounce of conviction, I urge you to obey it. I urge you to listen to it. I urge you to consider and listen, because some of you walking by. You know, you know inside that it's wrong what you're doing. You know intuitively. You know that it's unnatural if you lusted for someone of the same sex. You know that already. No one has to tell you that. So that's why we can come and say Jesus saves and people just get upset because of that. Why? Because we know, you know that intuitively that God has a standard. And listen, I knew this. I was living in fornication. I was I was in the club life, and I knew that I was not in the will of God. I didn't have to. I mean, I knew that already intuitively. I knew that I was in sin, and I know most of you already know that. But we want to tell you that there's hope in Jesus that you can be set free from the bondage of the sin that you're in. You can be set free. Does that mean anything to you to be right with God? God is your Creator. And listen to this. He says this in the book of Amos, prepare to meet thy God. So eventually you're going to meet him. And what I'm trying to, what we want to proclaim to you so you know, is that it's, it, listen, this is the only time you can get to know him is in this life. Because when you meet him after this life, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. I appreciate, I appreciate people who are listening. But to throw up the middle finger, it shows your lack of love. But I thought you were a community of love. The reality of it is you show your fruit that it's really not love. It's really not love. It's a superficial love. But the Bible says that love is patient. The Bible says that love is long-suffering. The Bible says that love does not rejoice in sin. The Bible says that love rejoices in the truth. That's the truth about love. But you don't show me love when you walk around with your middle finger. You don't, you know. So who's really hating? Who's really hating? Who's really hating? We're actually loving because we want to be concerned about your soul. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You can be made a new creature. You can get a clean slate, a clean start. You can get a clean start. Does anyone, does that concern anyone? You you have to let go of your sin. You can get it, you can get a clean start if you let go of your sin. But the reality of it is many of you mock God. You don't want to let go of your sin. Prayerfully, prayerfully that you'll consider, prayerfully a seed is planted in your heart today. Prayerfully that you'll consider that you're not right now in the will of God, that you're on the way to hell and you need a savior to save you from that direction you're going. Prayerfully, you'll, 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 you'll see that. Prayerfully, you'll come to the knowledge of the truth. Prayerfully, you'll see that the lust, the lust, that this, what you call love, which is really lust, that it's going to keep you in bondage. It hurts you physically and hurts you spiritually. That's the truth about it. So you don't fight against me. I'm not, I'm not irritated at all. I'm not irritated at all about you, young lady. I'm not irritated at all, but what I am doing, I'm concerned about you. I'm concerned about your soul. Some of you are young kids, man. You're not considering, you're not considering your soul. You're not considering life after death. 
God loves you. Listen, let me tell you about God's love. This is my first time here. I know. Let me tell you something. You don't know God. You have to be in Christ. You have to be in Christ to know God and know about his love. Let me tell you something. 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 Let me you know what? You, you need to go. Want, Listen, let me tell you something. That's the issue. Yeah, Many that's people believe in a false I'm gonna gospel. Be like they believe in a false church. They believe that God is okay with sin. God is not okay with fornication. God is not okay with idolaters. God is not okay with adulterers. God is not okay with effeminate. God is not okay with sodomites. God is not okay with thieves. God is not okay with covetous people. God is not okay with drunkards. God is not okay with liars. God is not okay with people who watch pornography. No. God hates workers of iniquity. God is not okay with sin. And that's what you've been lied about. You've been lied to. We want you to come to the knowledge of the truth. That rainbow stands for God's promise. God's promise to not flood the earth, destroyed us, the earth by flood. That was his promise and he has not done it since. He kept his promises. He, why? Because he's a promising keeping God. Hallelujah. Praise the name which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My friends, we are not here. We are not here to just call, to just tell people that they're going to hell. But we're here to tell people the truth. And so what happens is people, Satan is sending to where the gospel is going forth to blow up the sea. You know, Jesus said when he was on earth, he gave a parable. God bless you, officer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless the officers, praise the Lord. God bless those God appoints for the protection. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. My friends, we want you to know that Jesus, he gave the warning when he was on earth. You know, we cannot do anything without the Lord. You know, the one who brought, the one who, one who sent the only Son of God, the only one, the Savior, who died on the cross for your sins. You see, many of us know, understand that Jesus died. They've even heard, people have heard that Jesus died for the sins of the world. People have heard this. But people don't understand it. People don't understand what it means that Jesus died for the sins of the world. Because that's only they call it the gospel. You see, it is sin that separated you and I from our holy God, the Creator. Sin separated you. The Bible says in Isaiah 59, Behold, the, the Lord's hand is not short, but it cannot save. The Lord's is here heavy, but it cannot hear. But your sin has separated you from your God. And your iniquity has hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So friends, when you cry out to God, when you cry out to God, listen, many people here have been abused in once in their lifetime, probably multiple times in their lifetime. And they tend to hate God for not being there for them. But friends, what you have to know is the whole story. You have to know the full account, the full story of God as to why He did not save you during that time. You see, when we walk in darkness, we don't see the light. When we walk in darkness, God can't hear us. He can't hear us. But when our hearts change, when we want to see truth, when we want to know truth, when we, dis when we realize, when we realize that we cannot live this life in happy, we can't find happiness apart from God. You see, when you go, but so, you say, yes, you can. Do you have to find happiness? Okay. 
have you been depressed? Okay. Never been depressed? Okay. So this man has you and you're very young. And just give it some time. Give it some time. Because it will happen. You see, many people, they go after alcoholism. They go after getting drunk. They go after the marijuana. They go after anything to get that high. That quick high. And what does it do? It's good for a season. It's good. It makes you feel good for a time. But you still fall back to the depression. You still fall back to the anxiety. You still fall back to the anger. To the insomnia. And all of the light. But friends, Jesus Christ wants to pull you out of that. He wants to save you from yourself. But the problem is that you have the very thing that is destroying you. You love the very thing that is giving you that depression. You love the very thing that is giving you that anxiety. You keep going back to that thing, but you're never full. You never become fulfilled. But what we're here today is to show you the only one who can fulfill you, and that's Jesus Christ. You see, God, when He created you, He gave you a God-shaped hole that only the Lord Jesus can fill. Hallelujah. Only the Lord Jesus can fill God's heart. Hallelujah. Uh, can you feel that? Fill your heart. Hallelujah. The, uh, only Jesus can fill that God-shaped hole in your heart. And so you have to repent. Turn to him. Turn to him. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And everyone practicing evil hates the light. It will not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. You see, but Jesus tells you why you don't come to the light. Because you love your sin. And Jesus says, hate your sin. You see, every single one of us back here, we have a testimony of what's loving our sin. But what did it do? It left us in darkness. And ultimately, we found out that it was leading us to destruction of our souls. And so at the end of the day, there is no good to be found in walking after the lusts of the flesh, walking after darkness. But you stay in your darkness when Jesus, the light came to you. The light of the world came to you to pull you out of the darkness, to set you free from the lusts of your flesh, to set you free from the bondage that you have to sin. The bondage that you have to continue going on to find a new partner because you felt empty that, with that last partner. And then you then you go to find that new partner. And you intertwine with that partner. And you do wickedness. You perform sexual immorality with that partner. You see, Jesus says, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. You see... Sex isn't meant to be enjoyed between a man and a woman in holy matrimony. And so that is where it was meant for you to enjoy it. But your soul, your, your soul inside convicts you because God gave you. He wrote his commandments on your heart. And he told you, he tells you every day that what you're doing is wrong. And so we don't like to be convicted by that. So we go out into the world and we get other people to tell us we're okay in our sin. When ultimately we come home empty again. Ultimately we come home empty all over again. And what do you end up doing? Going back to find another partner. You know what? I think I'll, I'll go and have sex with another person. You see, do you see that, that, that the definition of the insanity of that? When you haven't tried Jesus Christ, and we're telling you, try Jesus, my friends. We have all tried Jesus. And so Jesus says when he when he came to the earth, he said, repent and believe. Repent and believe the gospel. You see, he wants you to turn from your sin and come to him. Come to him. And he will set you free from that bondage. Okay? He will set you free from having to go back as, as an insane person repeating the same.
same thing over and over again and continuing in that emptiness. My friends, you don't have to do that. You can just obey Jesus Christ. You can just turn to him. You see, the Bible says in Ezekiel 36, the, the, the word of the Lord through Ezekiel's mouth, he says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. He says, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk after my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. You see, the Lord, he understands that you cannot do it alone. However, however, you need to understand that. Jesus came to warn, to warn, to warn those who love their sin, who remain in their sin, and die in their sin. But those who hate their sin and cry out to God, that those are the ones that Jesus came for. Jesus said, I did not come for the whole, I came for the sick. He said, I did not come to call the righteous, to, but I came to call the sinners to repentance. You see, when you call out to God, you don't want to enjoy and have pride in your sin. You see, when, when, for me, I lived a very sinful lifestyle. I was a fornicator. I had sex outside of marriage multiple times. I was an adulterer. Jesus says, if you look upon someone to lust after that person, you commit adultery already in your heart. And I was looking with lust and, a, and at pornography, at women out, uh, outside in public. I would have come to a place like this and looked upon people with lust. In fact, I spoke to another gentleman earlier who said he was here, literally, he said he wasn't even gay. But he's here to look with lust, to find someone to take into the into the bed with him. So this is this is the wickedness of mankind. You see, God said in, in Genesis God warned us. God, God said he looked upon man. You see, the unfortunate thing is the depravity of man. You see, you, there's a reason why you are here today my friends god intended originally when he made man he made man perfect he made the world perfect there was no death no disease no destruction no suffering he made you perfect in his eyes but when the first man sinned against god adam and eve when they sinned against god sin entered the world and death disease and destruction entered the world and continuing to suffer, man continued to sin over and over again until they became increasingly wicked. And so God, in Genesis, he looks, he looks on man and he says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. My friends, he looked upon the world and he saw how evil our hearts were. But he found grace in Noah. You see, he could have destroyed us all and he did destroy mankind and all that was on the earth in the great flood. But he saved only eight. He saved Noah and his family. And then after he had destroyed the earth in that flood, friends, Noah exited the ark and there was a rainbow that stood outside, God had casted that rainbow as a covenant unto him, saying that he would not destroy the earth ever again in a flood. But my friends, he is coming a day where he will, he has promised it, destroy the earth in fire, in fire. So friends, there's a special meaning to that rainbow. And we love the rainbow. But unfortunately, what you are doing here is you are blaspheming God because you are holding up his covenant. You are holding up his covenant that he used right after he had destroyed the earth for this very wicked thing that all of man did what was right in his own eyes. They did what was right in their own eyes. And so friends, you continue to 
to revel in your sin, to pride, to take pride in your sin. And God is coming to judge the world one day. But the, the promise of God, it says in the word of God, it says that the Lord is not slack concerning, concerning that promise. The Lord is not slack concerning his second coming to destroy the earth in fire. But it says that he's long suffering. It says that he's patient, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And my friends, he sends those who he is, who he is given of his Holy Spirit, who he has unveiled their eyes to come out and share truth with you. And that's what we're here to do today. We're not here to hate you. We're here to love you. And that's what we're here doing. You see, the ones who hate you are the ones who are telling you you're okay in your sin when fire is coming. You see, the ones who hate you are the ones who, who allow you to remain in a burning building because you're sleeping, because you, you worked hard last night and you were really tired and they don't want to interrupt your sleep because they, they love you. They love you. They don't want to interrupt your sleep. Meanwhile, a fire is burning in the house. And so we are out here saying, come out of there. We are out here saying, come out of that burning house. Come out. We are not afraid to wake you up even though you worked hard last night. Even though you, you, you worked tirelessly for days and you haven't slept and you're sleeping like a baby inside of the... No, we are coming to you right now. We're saying, come out of that burning house. Come out. That is how we show that we love you. But this is the love of God. He is telling you this. Meanwhile, everyone here is like, no, 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 let him sleep. Let him sleep. Because he's loving his sleep right now. And they're going to allow you to be consumed in that burning building. That is not love, my friends. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but in the truth. Love loves the truth. You see, I cannot... I cannot hug you and hold you on an interstate highway when an 18-wheeler is coming at us. No, I have to grab you by your arms and throw you out of the road. I might hurt you. I might pull your arms out of socket. I might hurt you, but I'll save your life. Do you understand the difference? I could coddle you. I could hold you on that, on that interstate highway. I could hug you. I could show you the love of the world. The love of everyone around you who wants to hold you on the interstate highway while that while that 18 wheeler is coming. But no, I am going to, we are out here to pull you out of the highway. We don't want you to perish. We don't want you to die. And so it's going to sting. It's going to hurt because we're not going to ask you. We're going to grab you. And we're going to sling you out of the way. And it's going to hurt. But in the end, you're going to see it's going to cut you to the heart. You see, the word of God says, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. You see, it is it cuts like a knife. You see, we're out here sharing truth with you, and if it cuts, it bothers you. Don't gnash your teeth at it. No, let it let it bring you to sorrow so that you turn. Paul says, I, 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 and I'm paraphrasing, he says, I'm, I'm happy that it brought you to godly sorrow because it's godly sorrow that produces repentance that leads to salvation. And so, friends, we're telling you right now, if you hate your sin, if you hate your sin, you can be saved from your sin. Each and every one of us, we're in sin at one point in time in our lives. But it, we had to turn from it to receive the Holy Spirit of God, to receive the changed heart. You see, you, you say that you are good, you say that you are well, and so Jesus doesn't make you well. And so you continue to remain in your sin, going after the thing that is continuing to do nothing for you. But we're here to tell you today, you can have joy in Christ. You can have joy. Do you understand this? You can have happiness in the Lord. When he gives you his Holy Spirit, we're talking about God here. We're talking about the Spirit of God here, my friends. If God can create you, if God created all of this, indeed he can give you joy. But it comes at a cost. You must turn from this wicked lifestyle. And it is no cost at all. When you receive the Holy Spirit of God, you see that running after this life was foolish. 
It was foolishness. Because it wasn't serving you. It wasn't taking you out of that depression. It wasn't taking you away from those thoughts of suicide. You see, you still go home with thoughts of suicide, with depression, with anxiety, and you go after someone else. The same person who was hugging you in that burning building is a therapist, and he's telling you, oh, you, you know, you're, let me, let me, I diagnose you. You have OCD. That's what it is. It's OCD. Here, take some pills. And you get pills. And so, when, but you're never satisfied. You get pills that bring you into a zombified state. And you never, you never find joy. Why do you continue to run away from the light when Jesus has brought it to you freely? The light has come into the world. But men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Why do you love darkness? Love the light, hate the darkness, and come to the one who can save your soul, my friends. This gift is for all. It's for all mankind, all races, all creeds, all people. We're out here sharing the love of Christ for all people. It is welcome for all of you who would, who would turn to him, turn away from the wickedness of this world and to Christ Jesus. My friends, there's another ark being built. There's another ark being built right even now as I speak. This ark is spiritual, my friends. This ark is spiritual. Don't be like the days of Noah when they continued to marry and give in marriage and revel and have pride in their sin. Don't be like that. Get on the ark with Noah. Get on the ark. Turn away from this and come to Jesus Christ so that he can wrap you with this precious blood that, that cleanses you from all sin. He can save you from this first generation. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul says, uh, the Apostle Peter says, from this perverse generation and turn to Jesus Christ who loves you, who died for you, who shed his precious blood for you while you were yet sinning. Christ died for the ungodly. Turn to Jesus Christ, my friends. We love you. 